<laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. That feels good. That, that's 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 about right. That's about right. What's good, everybody? What's so what's so funny, Kyle? What's, what's funny? What's funny? Hey, <laughs> you listen, bro. Funny how my my clown. Now I'm playing. Let me stop. Let me not do that bit. Anyways, what's good, everybody? Welcome to No Cool Down Podcast, episode fifty eight. Oh boy, feels 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 real good right now. Feeling really great to be back on the podcast. New time, re- respectively. Just uh, you know, what I'm saying, new format, new things going on. Feeling real fresh in here. But as always, we are here with our podcast partners in crime. First and foremost, the Litness, aka uh, Desta Went Easy. How are you doing, sir? What's going on, Wen? Uh, I'm living, living, man. I uh, can't complain. Been sucked into destiny, and I can't find a way out. <laughs> somebody please send him send him and, and he needs an sos sos somebody help him bro he's he's stuck right there anyways moving on to our other podcast partner in crime you know what i'm saying man is currently in a personal hell of himself is called premiere pro and the render cycle king v i i i is in the building what's popping dog um oh good ready to get into this episode yeah, man. ready listen man and uh, I'm ready as well, and I'm also ready to rate this podcast five stars. Before we get into anything else, make sure you hit up Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Just search up No Cool Down, N-O-C-O-O-L, down, and we should be right there. Make sure you rate us five stars to help us jump throughout some of these ratings to get some new audiences and whatnot. As well, check us out on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, uh, what's it called? All of the podcast platforms, Google Podcasts as well. Just type in No Cool Down. We should be there. Uh, and yeah, without further ado, we got a lot of different stories in the warm up, some of the trailer trove, and a couple of main stories that we want to cover. So, uh, with that being said, uh, gentlemen, y'all ready? Let's go. I'm born ready. Let's get into it, man. Let's start. A lot of stories on the warm up. So, let's rattle through them as we go. First and foremost, Apparently, Stream Elements is under fire due to some really shady practices. As a report came up that some sponsorship, uh, you know, creator, some some agreement, uh, you know, they wanted to kind of read that contract a certain creator did, and they they were kind of getting the runaround a little bit until about an hour before their you know scheduled promo time happened for that sponsorship, and you know she she found a lot of red flags in the contract and a lot of move goalposts for a deal that could potentially void her of her money if she didn't look at those before signing. So she was getting like she was trying to get she was getting duped. Up until that last hour, until she really looked at the contract, and beyond that, management for Stream Element seemed to be more than fine with doing that. They they were kind of like at some point forcing this certain creator into signing that deal to get you know whatever thing under board. So just thoughts on some of the shady movement from the Stream Element sponsorships. This doesn't this like this story in general just doesn't really surprise me. Yeah, have you seen the notifications that you get from Stream Elements? It's like, hey, you could make up to one thousand da 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 da. That's not really how you would advertise a sponsorship. I yeah, think. they don't so, they don't work that way either. Yeah, because it's, it's, <laughs> it's not as simple as hey stream. Da, da, da. It's like okay, you stream if you get this many people to sign up. That's usually how the ones on stream elements that I've actually read into work. So it doesn't surprise me that there's some shady shit on the background. Yeah, it's not it's not surprising at all. Um, especially. Like every streamer could tell you of people of all these opportunities that they get uh, supposedly from people like like emails that are like, hey, I noticed that you stream if you stream, blah, blah, blah. Like it's it's honestly BS. If they're if they're giving you a runaround for a contract, do yourself a favor and don't even engage with it. Like just walk away from it, because at the end of the day, like that should never be a thing. If you ask for a contract, they should give you a contract. They should not be trying to hide things or change things like behind your back. So. Be on the lookout for that. Son, if you please look at your contracts, bro. If you accidentally sign into a 360 deal off of one, you know what I'm saying, $50 <laughs> thing for Raise Shadow Legends, I can't. Oh, that's your God. fault. That's partly your fault. Street Elements uh, is wrong. But please look at your contracts, you. man. Oh my goodness, <laughs> dog. Imagine you get locked into indentured servitude just because you wanted something on Genshin Impact and just did this little like one time sponsorship. It's a wrap for you. It's really a wrap for you. So please, please read your contracts, man. Damn. All right. Moving on to some other news. What the hell? I'm just very, very confused at an actual number associated with this. A sequel. Counter-Strike 2 is actually ready to go. According to uh, who was it? R. Lewis reports on Twitter and Dexterdo, Richard Lewis. Uh, so if this is not true, you cannot pin this on us. 
<laughs> according to those sources, uh, Counter Strike Two is ready and could be released in beta uh, as soon as March of this year. So we're hearing that there's a new engine in Source Two, a lot of various improvements over the current game, but CS:GO having the actual lettered sequel to Counter Strike One. How do you guys feel about this? I think this is interesting. I mean, I'm a huge Counter Strike fan. I put like thousands of hours in the game, but I think the real thing here is Source Two. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> you don't just drop that casually like you don't try to hide that with counter-strike 2 what do you mean source 2 okay yeah i'm not a huge counter-strike fan um but i am aware of how the number two can truthfully improve entire game concepts uh as an overwatch <laughs> fan so i hope that uh counter-strike 2 comes in with a uh, one less hero on the team um <laughs> And, you know, uh, a new push mode. I think that that's going to be sick. I can't wait for Counter-Strike 2 and their newest uh, Hero Edition. I'm assuming that's what the game is. That's crazy. That's, that's, no that's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. That's crazy. I'm yeah, just no, like, I, I mean, uh, go ahead. I don't know what to expect from it. Like, Counter-Strike in its current state, there's nothing actually wrong with it. Uh, it still functions. I think a lot of people just kind of outgrew it. It still has amazing viewership on an esports level. And like stuff like the skin market is still thriving. They're still charging people ten thousand pounds for a, a one karambit knife <laughs> with a zero point one zero zero percent pattern. Like the game seems to be in a fine place. So it's gonna be interesting what Counter Strike Two actually consists of. Yeah, I I've just had the age old question of what the what what the fuck were all the those Counter Strikes in the middle then? What was the difference if they had Source? Mm -hmm go you know what i'm saying like they had all these ones in the middle what's pop what's popular with valve and not and and really like being so cautious on numbered sequels like you didn't get past you didn't get you didn't get to three with half-life this is gonna be the last counter strike ever you know what i'm saying this is gonna be the last number one ever or something like that i i guess i got some real questions for valve bro they they, they, they got they, i'm watching them i'm watching them bro i'm just saying i mean i i'm cool with this you know what i'm saying counter strike 2 electric boogaloo that's cool I, I, that, that's fine, but I just need to see some gameplay on it to be real. But you know, yeah. hey man, they gonna they gonna do what they do. They are gonna have a dedicated fan base, so I respect to them. That's true. Very 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 true. Yeah, they gonna love it. So it is what it is. And uh, moving on to our next story here. During a there's a teensy tiny you know little earnings call for a Warner Brothers. Someone just kind of let it out. You know, just a small detail that Mortal Kombat 12 will be coming out in 2023. So thoughts on this i believe it when i see it um <laughs> like i that it's like yeah no we definitely have mortal kombat 12 coming out on the earnings call when it's like okay but like you haven't said anything about it evo got announced nothing nothing no, you're not saying that there's a new evo coming like you know what I'm saying? like what unless this is supposed to be told to us at evo i just don't know how you're gonna get it's march and you're telling me the game is coming out this year? Like, like this year? It's March. The hype should have been built at this point. Street Fighter started in October. Unless you guys are going to just drop it randomly, but I think that's the dumbest way to drop a huge, a legacy title. It's like you want to let the, you know, when you're a game this old, you got to let the older gamers know ahead of time. You got to put it in the newspaper. You know what I'm saying? You got to put it in their mailboxes. You can't just collect the Mortal Kombat fandom on, like, Twitter. <laughs> That's crazy. To Mortal Kombat for the geriatrics now? That's insane. Oh, you gotta drop off the flyers at the, at the retirement home. That's that's wild, bro. The I'm about to say the fight sticks covered with Ben Gay and whatnot. That's that's crazy. That's that's, a, that's out of pocket. That was funny. But I agree. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. <laughs> I agree, son. Like, dog. I don't want. I don't want the first place I'm hearing about a game to be on an earnings call. To be real, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I, I I personally don't yeah. like that. Especially if it's a big title in such a big fighting game year, such as 2023. Like, at this point, you already have to know that Street Fighter 6 is on a hot streak in terms of their press releases and getting ready for their release. You see Tekken 8 starting to ramp up and getting this stuff out. You know what I'm saying? We got a couple other fighters that just came out the woodworks and announced stuff for 2023, which we will probably talk about at some point in the future. Like, there's a lot of stuff going on 
in the, the the fighting game realm in terms of movement. Hell, even Gu- Guilty Gear come with a Game Pass, right? Is, is it's it, out it, today it li- as of this recording. Yeah. Literally, yeah. there's a there's there's already enough saturation in terms of fighting game news that is exciting. Earnings calls probably shouldn't be the first place to make your presence known. That's all. I'm, that's yeah, all I'm saying. And, it, and it, that that might be that might be the reporter's fault. That might be you know their fault. But I would just say if if we knew this day was coming that you were going to talk about it on, a, on an earnings call, at least have a little teaser or something, man. You know what I'm saying? Pull out Scorpion, make him do a backflip online or something, man. Just, <laughs> just show us something beforehand, please. Yeah. Jeez, man, that's, that's that's all ass, man. Just have some pizzazz with the with the rollout, bro. Ed, I know this wasn't Ed's fault. I'm not gonna blame Ed Boone for this. I'm not gonna blame Ed. I'm not gonna do it. Anyways, <laughs> moving on to the next topic here. We got ah this story. Oh goodness. At the top of the week, we got a Pokemon Day direct from last week with some updates on a brand new Netflix stop motion series in Pokemon Concierge, new updates to Pokemon Unite with a new Pokemon in Zacian, uh boss a boss a boss rush mode, excuse me, and a brand new event, Pokemon Sleep coming later this year, Pokemon Go <laughs> Plus Plus that can be used with Pokemon Sleep and Go, and some Pokemon Scarlet Violet updates including Paradox Pokemon and Walking Wake and Iron Leaves which look like mutated versions of sweet coon and verizon uh pokemon go functionality coming to scarlet and violet and the hidden treasure of area zero dlc starting with the indigo mask in fall 2023 and the indigo disc coming in winter of this year so thoughts on everything pokemon day shut the fuck up (laughs) damn (laughs) 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 can can you elaborate (laughs) What are they talking about, bro? <laughs> Pokemon Sleep, Pokemon Go Plus Plus. Like, literally, I think of those things, and the first thing that comes to my head is like the shit attempt of uh, Microsoft Connect. Hey, yo, man. Hey, that's crazy. Connect, Connect was dead I, and gone on my I head. You didn't have to bring that I back don't up. Care about Pokemon games anymore. They release and they are shit. Like, mm. why am I walking around? And I just fall through the map. Why, mm. like this? So much shit wrong with the current like era of Pokemon that we're in. It's just like I don't care. Oh man, I love that. I love that. I I never <laughs> felt I never felt such deep hatred unless I was the one doing it. Um, <laughs> no, I think that I think that this direct was like I'm gonna get I'm gonna rack up mad points at the like on Pokemon Sleep at the next Pokemon Direct if they keep going <laughs> like this. Like <laughs> it's. It was like way longer than it needed to be. Um, I, because again, I don't, I know the people who play Pokemon Go. A lot of them are not tapping into the directs. A lot of them are getting their updates when they're opening their app and they're like, oh, this is a new feature. Sick. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not, I don't know. I don't know who this is for. Uh, maybe it's crazier in Japan. I, that's every time I watch these directs and I'm like, I don't like any of this. I always assume that it's just a, a cultural thing. Like in Japan, people are going that. nuts. That's super fair. Yeah. Like, po- like on the streets of Shinjuku and Osaka, like, this might be going crazy. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, <laughs> I, you know you know what I mean? Like, you know, the Japanese j- j- the Japanese audience just takes the Pokemon differently than everybody else, especially in the Western yeah, world. So, it's just, yeah. that's just, that's, that's a fair, that's a fair, uh, that's, that's, that's a fair, I guess, just difference there. But, again, I do not care about most <laughs> of this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. This ain't, unless, unless you bring me a Pokemon Stadium, a Pokemon Dungeon, or a Pokemon Heart Gold Soul Silver remake. I don't, I don't know what you want. I don't know what you want from me. I, this was this, I, to, to give a straight grade, D minus, D minus, as okay. as close to F as you can get. I feel like after X and Y, things just went so downhill, bro. Honestly, that's 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 a that's Some, a fair comparison. As I'm not, I'm not gonna engage. I don't want to get stabbed. <laughs> you, you <guys>. I'm a, <laughs> Walking down, I don't want to get beat up. I will walk down the street. I'm gonna end up being over a Pokemon Go gym and get stomped out. It's gonna be a, a wrong, the worst, they, the worst they, of they days. They finna spin my stop. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Now nah, we chose you today, boy. We chose you." All right, come on, man. Please, please. <laughs> <laughs> nah man pokemon oh, man. pokemon direct jeez but please uh oh, anyways uh moving on with some more disappointment here uh some inside what? snitches have surmised that ubisoft is putting their chip in uh, their chips all in on assassin's creed they are putting 
their money on Assassin's Creed over the next few years, guys. It's all or nothing. And they're ready to develop four more projects in the Assassin's Creed realm. Apparently, we're looking at a new studio taking on Assassin's Creed in a brand new separate project. A free four play, a free to play multiplayer PVE entry. Free to play four player. And uh, you know, racking that all up with the current projects that we already heard of and whatnot, that's gonna be a total of 10 games in flight that are purely Assassin's Creed on Ubisoft's banner. So thoughts on 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 the the ramp up in assassin's creed i mean nice i don't think uh i don't think it's necessary yeah but right. i'm not gonna i'm not gonna sit there and act like i'm not gonna try them all <laughs> um, especially code red i think if they get that right that will be a really good game i i definitely will not be trying I, maybe any of them Actually, not even like a, like as a hater. Like it's not mm. even like a, I see Assassin's Creed and I'm like never. It's more like I see it and I'm like eh, I'm good. Like I feel I, there's already a lot of Assassin's Creed games. No, okay. I they they come they used to and they almost still do come out at a frequency that is absurd. And I'm kind of just like like four more. You're telling me there's four more titles. Like what are the four more titles? You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, that's surprised me. That's a little bit much, but hey. I I guess Ubisoft got to get it somewhere. So so you guys don't want Assassin's Cart? You guys don't want a cart racer? That's no. what you're telling me. You don't The you only gotta, thing oh if you, they sold you an Assassin's around. Creed, if they sold an Assassin's Creed AC, like an Assassin's Creed air conditioner, Bro, maybe that's crazy. That's <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the, that's what, about as much as I with care. The, with the hidden compartment, come on now. Yo, we, we, we pulling money out, man. <laughs> Pull the money out, come on, dog. Hey, listen. Oh, no. The only thing that's nothing skew related that I'm like remotely, like on the edge about is Code Red. If they do that right, and we get like a nice, a nice looking game set in Japan, hey. also history. Yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Just gonna do the right thing here, cut out the middleman and go play some Ghost Tsushima. Just just you know, just kind of get right to the point here. Uh free to free to play four player PvE entry. Just gonna go play some Ghost Tsushima Legends. You know what I'm saying? Just gonna yeah, I don't know if he even skips over that. I was just like, okay, bro. It's gonna it's gonna it's gonna lock in on that. I again, for most of these projects, I don't even know. Uh, my hope is that Mirage just goes back to what it was before Origins. Even though Origins is really good, now like Origins, uh, you know what I'm saying, and I I didn't play Odyssey, Odyssey, but I, I, from what I saw, Odyssey was good. Then it went too too far in that other direction, but I hope Mirage is a really good return to just the core basics of the franchise, which it's been touted to be. So hopefully it is, and it's actually a really good take on a much more contained area. Please be smaller. Please just be a smaller open world. More stuff in it, but not. 10,000 kilometers. Don't, don't make it Microsoft simulator size. Don't make me take a nine hour flight just to go do another mission, please. Let's not do that. All right, guys? <laughs> Let's not do that. But more contained, I hope Mirage can set a good uh, re expectation of what we can see from certain Assassin's Creeds, for one. And two, they better hope to wh- what, what, whatever, whatever ancient person who held, the, you know, the Apple of Eden, whatever person who held that, Minerva, Juno, whoever they got on their side, they better pray that Ghost of Shima 2 does not release in the window of anything, especially Assassin's Creed Code Red, especially that Code Red, because if it does, all, I'm, 70% of the buzz for that game will die. I'm gonna be dead serious. 70% of the buzz for that Assassin's Creed game is out of there. Because Ghost of Shima 2 will steal it. It will steal it outright, and there's no coming back from that. They better hope they have stuff. They have their ducks in a row, and they better hope Sony and Sucker Punch, whoever, I've, yeah, I'm pretty sure Sucker Punch, they don't do nothing. They're still quiet to like 2030. Yeah. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You're right. Mm-mm, man. Crazy. Crazy. Anyways, moving down the line here. So the clock app, aka TikTok, has been dodging bans as per usual, but has announced a time restriction for users under 18, limiting use time for that group down to one hour a day. Trying to implement some time restrictions for people who are, you know what I'm saying, youngins on the app. How do we feel about this? Hey man, that needs to just be a an app rule. There are so many broke adults that spend too much time on the app. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's crazy. Talk That's about crazy. it. <laughs> 
<laughs> spin so get your money up. Spin. <laughs> See, spin. He's spitting. <laughs> oh, man. Everyone should be limited to that app, bro. <laughs> hey, Isn't it getting bad in the US? Uh, uh, it's, it's, we it's ha- been we t- have no idea. It's been, talk- um, it's been talked about again. It's, it's been making it- those rounds. Hey, if TikTok gets banned in the U.S. before guns, bro, we we as a country are <laughs> going places and not good ones. Hey. <laughs> you know what's a real harmful for children? TikTok. Yeah, that's what we need to ban in the states. That's what's the most harmful thing for children right now. It's crazy. <laughs> hey, um, sure, sixty minutes. Like, the kids are just gonna make accounts where they say they're eighteen. Like, it's not gonna be that big of a. It's stupid, yeah. but it's like they're gonna work around it. Hey, and I, and I'm uh, and I'm gonna make sure I post this on TikTok so people can see this. Man, get your money up out there. <laughs> 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 oh shoot, bro. Yeah, man. TikTok is TikTok, man. I ain't gonna lie. I'm I'm sitting here yeah. doing this. Sex, sexy on the block. Yeah, I gotta get some. I guess some entertainment. Buddy, from <laughs> hey, man. It is what it is. But anyway, speaking of which, speaking of dances. Speaking of speaking of that dance specifically, speaking of trends and history makers and all that stuff, history was made at the close of Black History Month on Twitch as Kai Sanat has shattered the record of all time subs in one month on the platform with over 300,000 subs. I believe the previous record was 283 and he went to like 320. So he shattered yeah, the he subs got, record. And it. how do you guys feel about this? congratulations yeah no that's pretty sick that's like super hype uh it's really dope because now like there is really no denying him at this point i, I was having a conversation about this and it's like twitch have no idea what to do with this man at all. no they don't at they all. don't tell by just everything that they're, they're doing yeah they stay at like, arm's length <laughs> They stay, yeah, they, they stay, the they literally just do a little, they, they have no idea. Yeah, they have a little show of respect here and there, cool, cool, but they just like, they, 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 don't, they don't even know. And, and it's wild because the people that they like champion are known for bad things. Like, like when I first knew, knew of XQC, it was him getting kicked out of Overwatch League for the things that he said. And yeah, like, yeah. there's, that's still their boy, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's wild to me that like, you guys are so weird about Kai. Like I don't know, I don't know I don't know why you guys are weird about Kai. Like I don't understand it. I'll, like it literally just at this point it's really just kind of racism because you can't really see why they don't like. I, it just doesn't make sense to me. You know what I'm saying? Like what has he done that your favorites don't already do that makes you so weary of being of putting this man on on your front page of putting this man as like your your champion essentially. And the craziest thing is, I I know the obvious answer. Yeah, I, you know what I'm saying, like, cause, cause he's a he's a black dude. Cause, to be real, let's keep it a, let's keep it a bean. He's a black dude, and so they're automatically gonna have some hesitation. But you cannot deny the entertainment value that this guy brings. This guy is, he did it. You know, they they you can quote you can quote and say whatever you want about how how he did what, who he did what. Nin, Ninja had his comments on him getting to the second most subs on his way there. Right. You know That's what I'm right. saying? People can put whatever you want on it. But this 28, 29, 30 day run that he had was one of the most entertaining things I've possibly seen on Twitch ever. It, it, it's it's probably top two, if not one, if not the most entertaining continuous event I've ever seen. Possibly, you know, just online in general from from like the, the the specifically content creator space or live content space. This was one of the most impressive feats I've ever seen. Like this man had damn near he had a guest every single day. He had something going on every single day. He did something I possibly will never do. This man went full Truman Show. This man literally had a camera <laughs> camped outside his bed, camped in the shower. He had to wear trunks and do the Millie Rock while he washed his body to get clean. Like, bro, he he was pushing himself to unbelievable limits and entertaining like nobody else. XQC couldn't do that. Wh- whoever was ahead of him couldn't do that. Ninja couldn't do that. They can't, I'm sorry. To me, it just wouldn't have came off the same, bro. And Kai Sinat's owed his flowers, and he's owed that platform. I think Drake was like, give that boy 50 million? Yes, you need to give him that 50 million, honestly, with how much buzz he's bringing to your app. When it, when viewership it has shrunk, shrunk a little bit for Twitch, to be honest, in a time like that, yeah, where he's I bringing... I don't think he should take any deal that Twitch throws his way. 
Uh, honest, honestly, I would be like, yo, they need to pay him a hefty dollar because he's 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 one of the things that's driving interest. Because when you think about it, man, I'm gonna be honest. I don't think having the Twitch app natively is something that, like, you know, like, oh, say, like, like black, like, like black kids or something like that. No, I don't think that's something that natively happens. Maybe more now because like the the more technologically savvy generation, cool. But like, he's bringing eyes to the platform from from near and far, from whatever walk of life, all over the world. You know what I'm saying? If you want to call it that, he he's bringing eyes to Twitch in a, in a time where Twitch is not helping themselves in the best possible light to be the top dog in the streaming space. So you need to, his record is earned, but you need to make sure you keep him there. If you really want, if you're really about success, if you're really about growing a platform, you need to do whatever you can to keep that boy plotted on Twitch for as long as possible. Yeah, they're not going to be able to, to get the hook though. Mm. Listen, bro, he'll go right back to YouTube to be real with that bag, right? Hey, I'm, I'm not like he's not on there already. Yeah. I mean, he needs to hit TV. True, yo, ne- yeah. Honestly, he's already within touching distance. He's already within touching distance of television. Mean, Literally. And people must do like what they do just on the first specific like channel. Yeah. Or show. And that's and if they can substantiate that leap that's to TV. Independent, bro. bro, yeah, nah. That's and that's that's the hardest leap that anybody could make from this space. You know, we've seen entire entire networks rise and fall. You know what I'm saying? Just because there wasn't enough backing, even though people wanted it at first. But if they if if they can make that jump, if he and the rest of AMP can make that jump to TV and somehow sustain it and bring young younger audiences to television, television, they 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 they've hit a different they've hit a different echelon. They've hit a different echelon. It's, it's, at least in the terms of U.S. creators, like they're they would they would be on a completely different plane. Because it's one thing to be you know again that like those people and they really have big traction on the internet you know what i'm saying but it's another thing to bring that traction everywhere you go and have that appeal on television on other platforms on other mediums that's yeah. that's a whole another level but i hope they can i really really do hope they can man listen black kid from the bronx i i my that automatically pulls in my heartstrings man you gotta you gotta rep that you gotta you gotta love that stuff man it is what it is All right, moving on to the next story here. We got uh, a tra- new trailer, guys. Come on. Halo Infinite Multiplayer Season 3. Come on now, guys. Let's go. New modes, new maps, battle pass, equipments, a brand new weapon, a plethora of custom forge maps that have been curated into community uh, playlists to hop into, man. Halo Infinite Season 3, guys. We, we made it. How do you feel? Sorry, I just woke up. Oh, um, <laughs> wow. 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 Um... Yeah, no, that's that's good for Halo, man. I'm, I'm I hope them I hope those boys are happy. I I'm sure they'll let me know. All seven. <laughs> nah, that's actually insane, bro. Come on, man. They got, they got it, bro. W. That wow. Discord is jumping. Wow, wow. Come on, man. You guys give them a little bit more slack than that. I mean, they're trying. They got something. They are trying. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that. You know. Like I, I, I'm being a little, a little funny, but like it's cool for them. But like it's just like I'm not going back to Halo. That game was was cool, but it had also had its problems. And the fact that it didn't like grow is why it's kind of dead now. Like I, when I think of Halo now, instead of like the cool parts, I think about how one how massive, how big that game is. Essentially, like how much it takes from my computer, and like how i have to run that i gotta re-download it and, I, and then i gotta tell other people to do that man i'm pretty solid off that i'm good uh, <laughs> yeah I, listen uh, and it hurts my heart because that gameplay is honestly good it really is good but damn it's hard to buy me back in when i've already been you know when i already cashed out at this point man it's, it's just difficult like can somebody just 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 tell me when griff ball comes back and i'll come back just tell me when Griff Ball, and not like like an official playlist. Not not like I gotta go find the map or go find the thing. Just 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 let me know when Griff Ball comes back. That's that's my only ask. Mm-mm, man. All right, moving on. Uh, in the wee hours of the morning last week, uh, FromSoft just to, you know as they do, just decided to casually drop the bombshell uh, of the announcement 
of official DLC coming to Elden Ring entitled Shadow of the Erd Tree, which seems to be taking a deeper dive into the story of Mikola, Melania's twin brother. Now, the key art sees what many believe to be Mikola riding Torrent, which was the mount that, that was given to players early in the game. And if you didn't get something, if you didn't get Torrent, basically, you, you, you fucked up. You messed up. I don't know why you're walking around the map the entire time. Something was wrong with you, literally. But thoughts on uh, Shadow of the Erd Tree Elden Ring DLC? I mean, nice. I'm looking forward to watching people complete it with one hand behind their back tied to a balloon <laughs> strapped to a beam pole and just getting shot at by RPGs. Like, yeah, like, hey, let's go. Let me see it. Um, this, DLC, this DLC will be cool. Um, I'm sure it'll be great. Uh, it would be sick if they added some uh, customizable game modes, uh, a variety of difficulties. Um, I think that that would make this significantly a bigger better update but hey you know to each their own i suppose you about to get power slammed by purists bro. there's no <laughs> other way i could have said it nicer for these fucking fans than than that like there's no other way outside of being like i just give us easy mode you guys are a bunch of big babies uh no nah, they about to they about to get on your neck bro they said, there's no way me and shaki could ever gonna do that ever <laughs> in your life. Oh, it's against the nature of this game you don't understand you don't understand that you don't have dedication in anything in your life <laughs> i play video games just get good kid just get good <laughs> shut your ass up boy shut your ass up <laughs> dweeb get your stupid ass off <laughs> dweeb uh, get your stupid ass off but I'm not uh, I mean, so the, the game but. is actually doing quite good without the dlc anyway yeah oh, no like, it's it's a behemoth it really didn't need it at game. all but then they were like, hey, go two more for you. They go, they go. Yeah, no, yeah. They're doing what like a lot of companies will never do, which is like giving you a surplus of like a lot of content from like a Ubisoft game is like more collectibles. They have like full on things going on in this game. It's an it's enormous. I don't even think I'd touch every single thing in the base game. And now there's DLC that I don't even think I'll I'll be able to play. Like mm. I I just stared into the void. Knowing that I, I, there's something in my soul that will not let me go forward in life until I go and finish beating Plasuda Sacks or whatever that Dragon Lord Priest is, whoever that guy is, whoever that low down, low life thug is, I have to go fight him in order to do his DLC. My honor will not let me go any other way. So I'm going to be thrust back into this, this whole world one way or another. And it's just a pain to see, but I can't wait. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for this DLC. Whatever happens, I'll be there. I will be there again before Elden Ring. I was not the biggest Soulsborne fan after Elden Ring. I, I really am. I, I really am. Com I can comfortably jump into these experiences. I feel good about it, especially Elden Ring stuff. I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Give me more of that. Cause y'all have knocked it out the park 10 times over. And this is just icing on the cake at this point. You did everything right. You did everything you were supposed to do. And now we in bonus round. So uh, let's eat, let's eat Elden Ring fans. It's time to eat baby. <laughs> uh feels good it feels really good all right moving on to the next story here moving from the good news of that announcement we had some unfortunate news as well from last week that the wolf among us 2 has officially been delayed out of 2023 and into 2024 as it stands unfortunate but thoughts on this guys i mean delays are expected i did love yeah. i saw a comment um, someone said move from Unreal Engine four to five, so I don't expect until twenty twenty five. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, like uh, this game, they could have released it on the on the older engines, and, it, and people I think would have still ate it up. Like I would have still, oh, I would have still played sure, it for sure, for sure. But take your time. Like don't rush your game. Yeah, yeah. literally, we say this all the time, and we're gonna say it. Like, I'll, I'll say it again. We want games to come out in the best shape possible. So if you need to delay it. Delay that hoe. Delay it and come out in the best shape possible, especially for a game of this importance and stake as The Wolf Among Us 2. I know The Expanse came out, or The Expanse is coming out soon, uh, and it looked good. It looks good. But the real crown jewel of Telltale's return to the big stage of gaming, to the mainstream, is Wolf Among Us, in my opinion. And yeah, if I can they. Agree with that. 
and and they need to have the biggest debut possible to let people know, hey, we're back and we're better than ever. We're doing this how we need to do it, and we're and we're putting on again at at the biggest stage, the biggest scale, how we do. And they need to knock this one out the park the first time around. No, again, no no hiccups, no not not too many. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know mistakes or, or or poor poor execution. They gotta knock this out the first time. And I think this is the, again this is the big one that's gonna set everything else up. So if they do anything else in the future, like bring back another Batman uh, animated series or something like that or anything like that. It has to start with this. It has to start with a really good release. So I'm I'm perfectly fine with it. Yo, side note, they should do like a Daredevil. Bro, take. a Daredevil would be cold. A Daredevil Telltale would be nasty. Oh, that would be nasty. Oh, I would love it. I I I I would love it. And and I think I deserve. I think I deserve it. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> oh my goodness, bro. Yeah, you just gave me a dastardly idea. Oh, that's so good. Oh, that would be that would cr- oh that would crank that would crank for real. <laughs> Trooper's gonna be doing this for like the next three days. He's just gonna be walking around his house like, no, that'd be bro, so good. <laughs> you, nah, people, people have been planting ideas in my head, and now they stick with me for like several, like almost a week, bro. I'm not even gonna lie. Like niggas did this to me the other day too with a stupid meme that will not leave my head, and it's a pain in the ass. But it's where we're at. It's where we're at. But yes, Wolf Among Us two. Take your time. Take your time. Uh, moving on to the next story here. Uh, I had some business news in a sense. Uh, Matsuda, aka the president, or should I say former president, Yosuke Matsuda of Square Enix, has been usurped. He's been out. He's gone. He's out of there. They have removed him as president of Square Enix, and they have replaced him uh, very, very swiftly with, I believe, uh, let me get, let me get the name. I believe it's Ta- Takashi Kiryu. I think, I think it's Takashi Kiryu who is now. Uh, so, like, bro. Uh, you know, there was a lot of controversy over some of the releases that he over, you know, just kind of was at the figurehead for the NFT conversation. Uh, he was a big pusher of that. Uh, not to say that the new person in charge isn't, but there's a lot of movements over what, you know, what might happen with him, how they how they let certain studios go last year in the Western world, i.e. Uh, some of the uh, what's it called? Tomb Raider stuff. The Tomb Raider IPs gone from them. Several studios. Uh, how do you feel about this exit and where they might be heading now? Um, um now go ahead. I I just gotta update my LinkedIn is all, you know, <laughs> wait for that job posting. Um I know they say they got the new guy, but I'm I'm still I'm still waiting on that call. <laughs> uh well, I know uh, that there were a lot of people that was unhappy with him. So Yeah. I mean this is is this is this the same guy that made us wait seventy eight years for uh uh, Kingdom Hearts three, yeah, get him, get Buddy out of there. Yeah, it might, it might, it might be, it might be. Get get Buddy out of there. He he's done his time. He's done. Yeah, nah, honestly, over the over the NFT thing alone, and quite literally at the top of this year, we, we talked about it on another episode as well. Just like the statement at the top of the year, January first, like, hey, we talking about these NFTs, baby. We really bringing them out hot. Yeah. Square Enix about to get on them hot. Like, why would you say that at the top of the year after the whole world was just like, yeah, bro, we no, don't. It's just the wrong approach to it. Like, you can't. Uh-huh. Like, you just have to understand how the world views that shit. <laughs> and it's not good. Uh-huh. So that's not how you, if you are involved in it and you want to do that, that's not the way to go about it. Yeah. And again, not to say this new guy is going to do the same thing or push it just the same. I don't know yet. But the Matsuda wasn't working out. I don't think it was working out. And especially if the L he took over how, um, uh, what's it called? Tomb Raider got resold for literally like triple the price that they sold it for. I, hey man, I'm just saying it, it don't it, it don't look like a good look for him. So yeah, they they found out how much they could have got. Bro, they, they got they got yeah. him out of there. They got him out of there. He said you could have sold it for a, yeah nah staff meeting staff meeting everybody come in. We got to get this guy out of here. We vote him off the you island. They, you know when they hit the the button in Among Us? Yeah, <laughs> mercy me. That's, that's basically what happened to. Doom, 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 doom. <laughs> Say he did it. They sent him, <laughs> him through the air vac, bro. That's tough. That is tough, bro. Oh my goodness, man. Speaking of more uh, Square Enix news, the hits keep on coming as we got confirmation last week that Luminous Productions, the team behind Final Fantasy 15 and Forspoken, have officially been dissolved into Square Enix. With that taking effect on May 1st, it was unstated why the move was happening, but the team said that they remain committed to supporting Forspoken with DLC uh, uh, updates 
and uh, more patches and stuff in the near future. So uh, just thoughts on this, uh, what went wrong with Luminous, uh, and and what's next? Yo, was that game good? Which one? Um, I heard it was pretty like I don't want to say I hate using the word mid, but I heard it was like a pretty eye. Like not bad, not not mm-hmm. not blowing you away, but um for the right crowd, I suppose. Center of the road. Center of the road. Yeah. It's I mean, like when you just like say when you find when you ask, like, oh, what did they make? And you say Forspoken in Final Fantasy 15, it's like those are probably one of the two most disappointing games. Um in like I like those are two those are two games that got really hyped and then disappointed at launch. Like that's like I'm not no, like I feel bad for the team having to dissolve, but that's, that's factual reception, though. That's like that's, that's how literally took how we all accept. Like we, I was waiting for fifteen. I was so hyped for fifteen. I got it. And I was like, oh, this is I. Right. And then for spoken same route. Like it kind of is what it is at this point. Yeah, I'm just like, I mean, you can see the common theme. That actually makes a lot of sense with how flashy the gameplay was, and also how unoptimized a lot of that looked. Uh, fair. That makes sense, the common thread between those two games. But hopefully, they can, again, still support, uh, you know, saying Forspoken as as it goes on. They get rerouted to some other project. Hopefully, nobody loses their job. I uh, hope people get, you know, rerouted and put into the proper places to continue making games, continue to make dope stuff. Um, you know what I'm saying? Just keep just, 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 just keep trucking on. But those are some tough two goals. I can't even lie. That is a tough two games to, you know, hang your hat on, in a sense. Yeah. Mm-mm, bro, that shit crazy. Could be me. I would. I wouldn't put my name on. I was. It's different. Anyways, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we had some new words from Philly Spencer, aka the Pop of Xbox, this week in an interview with some extra tidbits of information, including expectation to keep Starfield an Xbox exclusive, which Sony people last week just took a really big distaste for, which we can get into and uh talking exclusivity on an ex uh, on a case-by-case basis and doubling down on call of duty parody as well as the importance of exclusives in gaming uh so yeah again some people really didn't like the exclusive talk but we can we can break this down how y'all feel about what phil spencer said what is important about exclusives how is that key uh i believe he stated it's a but- marketing tool and that I, I get it yeah, Outside that's, that's, of that. that's the only point that he could ever he could bring up from any either of those sides. Like, yeah, it helps drive sales specifically to your your team, but from a consumer standpoint, lol. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, I, sure. I it's one of those things where it's like I don't know. I honestly couldn't. I couldn't tell you what it would take for me to ever be like. I'm going to buy an Xbox over a PlayStation. Um, yeah. And that's that's me as a consumer. I know I'm not everybody, but, like, exclusives, sure. Like, what? I don't know. Like, even even when you talk about exclusive, I always come back to the, the main point of, like, well, I own a PC, so it doesn't matter to me. Um, and I know that's not the way everybody looks at it, because not everybody owns a PC, but it's also, like, mm-hmm. any exclusive you get on Xbox, there's a good exclusive on PlayStation, too. Like, it's, yeah, it's tough. And you're not you're not buying two systems unless you're like a rich little kid. Like I I as I as a father, as somebody who's a gamer now, I'm mean, not as a father, but as a as a gamer who if I ever become a father, like I'm not gonna be like, I'm gonna get you two consoles. I'm like, bro, I'm gonna just get you a PC because this is expensive. Like, why am I and then do the same thing? Bro, I thought you was gonna, I thought you said you was a father. Now I was like, bro, no, you was, no, you, was no, hide, no. you was hiding the world from your kid. I was like, that, bro, what you doing? <laughs> That's crazy. I'm about to say you 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 was Trip is like you are hiding a child. (laughs) 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 Nah, that's crazy, bro. Oh my goodness. That that shit is insane. But anyways, uh look, I'm gonna be real. I I care and do not care about exclusives. I care for the simple fact that I want to play exclusives if they're deemed exclusives. But I have a PC. So eventually all this shit will come to PC and I will play all that stuff. So it's like, do I want to play it now or later? That's the only thing that's, that's the only debate I have internally in my head for most of these things. You know, there's some things that's st- yeah, that, quite that, that, that Sony's being stingy about. Xbox will be stingy about. I will say this though. 
a lot of Sony people last week were using this interview as a basis for them to to basically shit on Xbox and Phil Spencer saying, oh, oh, you want to keep things on your platform. You want to keep things separate, blah, blah, blah. But what happened? What, you're going to do the same thing with Call of Duty, blah, blah, blah. You're going to do it with this. Oh, you guys are selfish. You guys want to put all this stuff in your separate... Shut up. Please, shut up. With as many things you can name on uh, Xbox aside that, that they want to keep exclusive, even though they, they expressly said... Call of Duty will remain neutral, which to some extent I at least agree in this first 10 year term. The next one, that's up in the air. I don't know. But to sit to sit there and for Sony fans and for a lot of the Sony loyalists or whatever to say that and then look and not look around at their side like, yo, they have like every single exclusive first party thing under the face of the planet. And there's been some rumors swirling around. I know we I I, I didn't have it on the notes here, but there was some rumors swirling around that there may be some uh, revelation on how much and how often Sony pays certain studios to keep things on Sony alone and not Xbox platforms. So there's, it's just a lot of funny stuff going or going on. Like at the end of the day, bro, I, from a business sense, I get it from, from the business trying to get their money sense. I understand you need something to sell your console. You need something that's niche. You need something that's scarce. That's not going to be found everywhere to sell and justify why you're buying that that piece of plastic. I get it. But but at the end of the day, all this shit needs to come to PC. Thank you. That's that's my address. That's my address. <laughs> I, I approve this message. I approve this message. Thank you all. Uh anyways, moving on. Uh now I I know from soft really do like to take their time. You know, but we've heard that they're actually moving. They're on a mission, and not just any mission. Rumors are swirling around that Armor Core 6 Fires of Rubicon could be good to release in September to October of this year, with the additional fact that the Elden Ring DLC to release soon after that. So I, I, I was very curious to see what the turnaround might be for Armor Core 6, but we could be seeing it this year. How do you feel about it? I still, I still have very, very high, not high hopes. I still, high doubts is what, what I would want to say because um, they're known to push games back for for quality, and which is amazing. We love that, but it's also just tough because it's like I haven't seen any gameplay of the game yet, and now you're telling me it's coming out this year. If I don't see like even a in a pre-alpha footage of the game, like even one of those trailers where it's basically like a cutscene but played, if I don't see that by the by march the year that you're supposed to announce i don't believe you're gonna come out on time you know yeah no nah, i hear it um this was actually a funny conversation because i remember we were doing the video game draft and dot was talking about it how you know they focused their efforts on Elden ring but then they had teams that were working on armor core in the background and then they shifted focus as soon as uh, Elden Ring release excuse me mm. so but the fact that they actually, you know, that could be the case. I, I, I'm inclined to believe that we might actually see a big reveal, a, a big information dump around the summer game fest time, and then we might actually get that date. Uh, some something is telling me that it might actually they're 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 not bullshitting. Something actually tells me that that they're not bullshitting, and then that the Elderman DLC will probably be like beginning of next year. I think, I think that's that's something that it just for some reason it seems plausible to me i ain't gonna lie due to the timeline and it seems that they it seems that FromSoft don't really have too much on their plate at one time they see they remain hyper focused on maybe one to maybe three projects at a time or at least have it in a pipeline this it seems feasible to me i feel like it could happen i'm i would put some money on actually seeing it this year yeah yeah as a matter of fact you want to put a one dollar bet on this one? <laughs> I'm definitely, I'm definitely not. Uh, no, because it doesn't come out before DreamCon, so. Oh damn! I'm, you I'm won't. not gonna, I'm I not mean, gonna hold I'll, on to that dollar. I'll cash up you the dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put a one dollar bet on it. All right, all right, I'll put a one dollar right. bet on it. Let's go, let's go. You heard it's here, first, baby. It's not coming baby. out this year. Or yeah. It's coming out this year. It, I think, I think that's a pretty safe bet. Yeah, I think, I think it will come out this year. So yeah, all right, baby, baby. we'll put the dollar on it, man. And it's not, this is not subject to inflation and none of that shit. So. Yeah, it's a dollar. You know what I'm saying? Like full American dollar. We're not we're not doing no exchange rate fluctuation and shit like that. None of that. None of that. You know what I'm saying? King, you want in on this? Nah, nah, nah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> I'm just checking. I'm just checking, man. Listen, we're going what's the parlay on this, anyways. 
Betting is getting terrible. <laughs> <laughs> betting is getting terrible, folks. <laughs> uh, moving on, we got a brand new trailer for uh, Tekken 8 with another reveal for another member of one of the most problematic families in gaming with the reintroduction of Jin Kazama. Thoughts on the reveal here, you guys? Um, Tekken looks amazing. That's mm. that's that's my my too long don't read. <laughs> I heard that um like I, I don't actually follow Tekken, uh, but I heard that basically some guy was comparing it to the rest of the characters that they've released and they're like, what the fuck? Why does this look so good? Did they put all the budget into this guy's moves? <laughs> yeah, no. Jin is he is the poster child, so it makes sense. He's like the the quote unquote good, even though he's not actually a good person. Uh, like the good guy versus the bad guy. Really, really sick. Um, design. His moves look dope. He looks more like he looks like a more honest character than his father, but his car- father is the bad guy. Um. Hmm. Honestly, I'm really excited for it. Can't wait. I think he is going to be really fun to play. And I'm honestly excited to see what everybody else looks. Because everybody in this game looks sick. 100%. 100%, man. Even though some wait, of them look bummy. The, uh, like, he just goes berserk or some shit? Uh, he has, like, the devil gene in him. And, like, his yeah, he, he fights yeah. with it. Whereas, like, yeah. I think his, his dad is more like he unleashes it. Where he's like, nah, I use a move. And then, like, it comes out. Uh, yeah, because I did watch Bloodline. But, like, I, I didn't really follow it too tough. Yeah, it's Dang. it's honestly it gets way crazier and it gets bananas. But hey. like Bloodlines is just a, a a toe in the pool of wild Tekken stories. Yeah, I I think I'm actually gonna. Can I get this show on PC? Uh, Tekken Seven. Yeah, you yes. can you can play Tekken Seven on PC, but you can also play Eight. I believe is also coming to PC. I bet Tekken Eight seeing me. Yeah, I'm about to say. Uh, I, I'll I, teach you the ropes. I uh, yeah, let's go. I'm I'm. You know, contrary to popular belief, I'm not here for story, guys. I'm here for suplexes, <laughs> power bombs, punches, kicks, throws, leg locks, all that type of shit. Destruction, <laughs> bombs, air strike. <laughs> <No. laughs> oh, man. As long as they're looking smooth, bro. As long as they're looking smooth, I don't mind, bro. So, so shout out Tekken 8, bro. It's, it's going to be a crazy fighting game year. I actually got to get in shape before I get my ass whooped on these games, bro. I don't want to get embarrassed. Let me, let me fix up. Oh, my gosh. All right. Moving forward here, IO Interactive, the team behind Hitman, are developing a brand new online fantasy RPG for console and PC that will quote unquote revolutionize the genre as we know it. Now, this matchup could, uh, well, yeah, this could align with an older rumor that an alleged online fantasy title from IO will be made as an Xbox exclusive. So, thoughts on what they're cooking over at IO? Yo, I'm here for. Have you seen Hitman Free? That game looks beautiful. Hey. I can't even front. That's that's one of the most visually stunning games oh, that have dropped that in the past few years. My time C M is genuinely one of the most beautiful things I've seen from a mm. game in a long time. I'm just yeah. Saying. I hit my game. The the latest hit my game is like super fun. Mm. I'm here for it. I just don't know how the hell they're gonna do online fantasy. You know what I'm saying? I don't know I, what I, they're I, gonna do, but I it'll look good. I just don't know what the hell it's gonna be. <laughs> Yeah, that's my only concern. Is like online fantasy RPG, like it's giving it's it's sounding very WoW like. It's like that's my only concern. Um, I if I want to play WoW, I'll play WoW type vibe. But I think it's gonna be I I give them the benefit of the doubt. I think yeah, Hitman, yeah, yeah. like exactly what you said, it looks amazing. Um, and I would like to see what they do outside of that box. Word word, I agree. Ah. All right, moving on here. The rumor source known as Jeff Grubb has been speaking on the possibility of a PlayStation showcase that may be coming this summer as he claimed it will be a massive event as Sony sets up the second phase of PS5. Now, I'm not sure how valid this is, but we haven't had a PS showcase since, since what, what, 2021? And that one had KOTOR Remake, Spider-Man 2, Wolverine, Ghostwire Tokyo. So who knows what could be in this one if anything pops up. So thoughts on this? Multiverse. Like, oh, multiverse. I was like, the fighting game? Uh, <laughs> 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 um, nah, I mean, like, I, want, I just want Wolverine. I, like, that's like the only game I can think of that I'm actually... Su- like, I'm excited for uh, games, but there, if there's, like, if tomorrow the world ended 
And like God was like, you get to play one game that didn't come out that like before we take you to your respective and uh, afterlife. I'm like, yo, let me play through that Wolverine game real quick. Like that's like, you know what I'm saying? That's that's how excited I am for Wolverine. So unless it doesn't, ha- if it doesn't have that, I'm gonna be critiquing it crazy. But if it has that, it's best best showcase I've seen in my life. Listen, man, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it a stack with y'all. That last PlayStation showcase was absolute crack. That was that was a standout. That was a standout conference show, whatever you want to call it, over the past several years. The past five, definitely. They had stuff out the wazoo. I. I and I wish there was more gameplay to it so I could rate it a, a, a near-perfect show. But at least for what they had announced, the weight of the stuff that they talked about was huge. Huge, huge stuff. I just wish they had more gameplay on it. I definitely see... We'll, we'll, I, here's my guess. If we actually do have a PlayStation Showcase, I think we'll revisit everything, almost everything that we saw uh, on the first show in 2021, except for the KOTO remake, because I hear that's there's trouble with that, so they might slow down on it. So I think that will definitely be shown. I think 100% we're going to see that um, the factions multiplayer from The Last of Us. We're going to see it. If, if there's something that happens there, we're going to see factions multiplayer because it's, it, we're, we're getting pretty, we're getting critically close to whenever they said they reveal more or, or some release date or something like that. I, I feel like they said it, uh, coming soon, quote unquote. But The Last of Us train is honestly too, it's too hot to stop right now. The show is about to end season one. You know what I'm saying? The Last of Us Part 1 PC release is going to be out in the spring, maybe sometime this month in March. Like, the train has to keep rolling somehow, and I think the factions multiplayer will be a big thing that comes through on that. Um, maybe a couple of new teasers. Maybe maybe something that a big studio is working on. Maybe something new. I don't want to guess Uncharted. I really don't want to guess Uncharted, but Uncharted could show up. But maybe something else is new from Naughty Dog. Give me Ghost of Tsushima 2 right now. I will I will sell my left kidney just to see something from Ghost of Tsushima 2, like right now. I, I I'm I'm being dead serious. Like I'll whatever yeah, that would be- take an appendage to be real. Like take your pick. I I'll, I'll I'll drop one right now if we can just work out a deal to show some some Jin Sakai gameplay. You know what I'm saying? I I need that in my life immediately, post haste, as soon as possible. So I, I think in general, those are my guesses for what I, I think would see. And then maybe a PS5, maybe like the, the PS5 Pro or whatever, like the next, you know, upgrade on the, the current generation. I'd probably leave that for last, but I doubt it. It would even show up then. Uh, but yeah, you guys any, got any predictions? Any Tim Foy hat moments? Uh, They're going to bring back the VO. That's crazy. Uh, about all the... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the Vita? Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. I heard that. I like the Vita. I thought you said VR. The Vita? Nah, mm -hmm. son. (laughs) This guy's in NASA. I like the the Vita as a, as like a system. Like, I like the Vita as as a hardware, but I don't want them to be like, here's Vita and we're making Vita, we're making Vita games. Like, no, 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 no. Just give me another device. Like, update the device. Egregiously unsupported. uh, If they just brought back a portable, I think that would go crazy. Bro. In, in egregiously unsupported platform, egregiously unsupported. The Vita was so uh, no help. The LeBron meme with his arms out, no help. That was the Vita, bro. Yeah, I didn't. I did not. I did not show no love for that, bro. I don't want you to bring it back just to flog it down with nothing. Oh, that, let's see. I, let's see. Even if they did, I feel like because what do we have? Now? We have the Steam Deck. We've got that stupid thing that Logitech made. We've got oh yeah, like, the Switch. Like I, everyone's everyone's dipping their toe. It's just the, mm-hmm. the big two. Uh, mm-hmm. I call them in this situation that haven't quite done yeah, anything. F- figured it out. And honestly, PlayStation's in, in much better of a pole in a pole position to do it because they've done it before. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just like you gotta figure it out. I I we could see something. If we do, I that would be hype though. That would be hype. That that would give you more incentive to buy a Steam Deck, but you know, it would be hype still. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we'll see, man. I, I think if we do get a showcase, though, it's gonna be fire. It's gonna be fire. If yeah, I mean they they always do a good job. To be honest, yeah. There was there was that one that was a little bit weird. They was doing a bunch of like random things for Last of Us Two. I think it was like the twenty nineteen <laughs> or twenty twenty one. I can't remember which one, but it was doing some weird shit for Last of Us Two. And I was like, all right, I'm not feeling this. I'm not feeling it. But that's beside the point. Uh, if they come out though, Xbox, y'all need to. <laughs> Xbox might be screwed for the summer, bro. 
They need they need they need to all hands on deck. Oh man. Anyways, we're gonna move on to this last story of the warm up here. Uh so the JRPG business ain't hitting to the J part of that phrase, according to FF Final Fantasy figurehead Naoki Yoshida, who stated earlier this week that the term JRPG felt really derogatory, as many Japanese devs felt that they were being made a joke of for creating these games and put their projects in a box. Now, although there was a lot of negative sentiment and flack in earlier years, Yoshida admits that while it, you know he still is wary of it, the connotation has gotten much more positive over the years. But this whole situation is twofold as people have been debating whether this is an RPG uh, for Final Fantasy 16 or just another DMC type action game that's based on the footage that was shown recently. So uh, thoughts on all this? Mm. <laughs> that's sigh, baby. <laughs> it's, it's just like, like I I get where he's coming from, but it's like, if this interview had been before the interview where they asked him, like, Yo, are you going to put black people in it? And he was like, no, there are no black people back then. Like, then I'd be like, yo, this man has experienced, like, he understands the problem with racism, right? And, like, I still think they shouldn't, like, I don't think JRPGs should be considered JRPGs. The only reason I, like, use that phrase to describe these games is solely based on the fact that, like, there's a certain kind of style that goes with JRPGs. Um, in terms of like gameplay and things like that, I use it for like the kind of games like Dragon Quest, like Pokemon. Like I feel like those to me were more JRPGs than like um, like when I think of regular RPGs, I think of like Skyrim, more American RPGs. Mm -hmm. So like that's why I use that this terminology. But it's just like frustrating when you see something like, hey, I don't want you guys to call it J Japanese JRPGs because it's like it has a negative connotation. But then at the same time, like I don't believe black people were in like the the olden times and by the olden times i mean the, you know remember the olden times with all the the dragons and the gods being summoned at a whim like yeah the the super realistic like western medieval like come on that's that's the problem with it is that like i i just don't understand how like you can see you you understand that there's problems with these kind of things but you're also like a problem in other communities you know mm -hmm. like it's just it's just a little a, a little bit hard to feel bad, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is, again, it's tough. Because on one side, again, if you guys were like looking online and stuff like that, and I, we talked about this er, er, like earlier off the pod, and I believe yesterday, JRPGs really did get a bad rap especially in the early 2000s and stuff when like stuff was really like flying like running wild people could say whatever on tv like I, I, if you saw this week like all this stuff like there was some old clips from g4 and stuff like that that were coming out that was like really really bad looks on on just describing jrpgs some really like just discriminatory stuff like it was not pretty it was it was it was wild and i'm like dog People, that's a whole nother conversation for a whole nother time of how people were just excited to see games on TV and ignore the actual fact that this stuff was wild. And that reminded me how much of like, again, JRPGs really were disrespected. A lot of Eastern, Eastern art and stuff like that, especially in the video game space was disrespected because it was, you know, Western dominated for in our eyes, quote unquote. That's why games like Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy got so much bad stick because not only was it like, you know, just a different alternative for what people were doing today, you know what I'm saying? In the case of Kingdom Hearts, it was it was more kid-based IP, you know what I'm saying, mixed in with the JRPG style. So people were automatically going to dogpile it, you know what I'm saying? I can see why that's that. And I'm glad that that connotation has changed a lot. And again, for me, it's just, at least for my connotation, it just feels like point of origin, you know what I'm saying? Like a, like a point of origin, like a... Yeah. Like people say K drama like in terms of TV, like a, a Korean drama, it's just a drama from Korea. I don't have the negative connotation towards it. JRPG always meant to me, oh, our JRPGs are just from Japan. Cool. They're just RPGs just yeah. from Japan. Didn't really go past that. But again, I can see where it felt derogatory and it felt like, yo, we're all just trapped in that little bubble and box. And I feel like this uh Final Fantasy 16 is something that strays it doesn't it doesn't stray away from that box but it goes into a different area of t of just setting tone what they wanted to execute I again they said the influences were more again like you know like game of thrones a lot more medieval stuff that was involved with it so they kind of changed certain directions with how they approached it and i think that's really cool i think that is cool but on the other side 
It's like, how can you, you can say that and then not take the time to address the situation of, hey, there were actually, you know what I'm saying, black people in this time that you're diving into. And just to say like, oh yeah, we thought we wanted to just kind of, you know, keep to the historical thing and we didn't really pay too much mind to that. Like, just saying we forgot honestly or, or we didn't know as much and we just didn't put too much effort towards it but we'll, we'll improve in the future it, it, at bare minimum that would have sufficed but the the way it was executed and the way he talked about it was a little bit off-putting in my opinion you know what i'm saying it's just it's tough when you see a situation and you notice the bias and discrimination and then you can't see it for another situation it it and again the situations aren't the same in execution and on on paper but the the core concept of it is still there something's being you know looked away or turned away or not included or mentioned or not seen in the proper context and you just kind of you just on one end you're you're mad at it because it directly relates to you but you can't see the same core concept happening with another group and that's kind of that's a little bit that's a little bit techie i can't even lie yeah i hear you Mm -mm. yeah man shit crazy i mean i'm like, I, I'm I, like, I'm a, I'm gonna feel a little bit weird. I'm gonna definitely I'm gonna definitely be making jokes about it, but I, I still want to try a Final Fantasy 16. But I'm just like, yeah, oh, I'm playing it. Like, I'm, I'm playing, playing. I, I'm playing it. I'm but, like, lie, but like, like, I just want to let you know, I'm gonna point out every part where black people could be in this game. And you mean so the whole game? It's like it's just it's it's yeah. stupid, and it's just a, a sign of the time. It's a sign of of an older person, like of an older mentality. But don't worry, shit will change. Mm. Yeah, I'm ho I'm hoping this whole experience is the eye opener to where we can really move past it and improve on this stuff in the future, man. And yeah, I'm I'm just I'm, things are moving. Things are moving a lot differently. I think I think um I forgot who it was, but there was a really good video on like black hair and video games. I think it was Blessing. Uh, I I don't want to butcher the, the butcher his last name, but Blessing did a really good video on this. I think it was on Kind of Funny Games channel. Uh, a really good video on black hair, and it's just like inclusion and just that whole general conversation through the lens which is black hair it was really dope so yeah if you want to get some you know what i'm saying uh some some knowledge on something in the in that zone go check that out but yeah uh i'm gonna still buy it but dog you know what i'm saying look at both sides look at both sides uh moving on some other pieces of the uh the trailer trove uh still some quicker quicker little pieces in the you know section we talk about more watchable media anime tv all that good stuff like that uh i did not know this first story was a thing but toonami's dropping the english dub of some one piece crossover episode that included dragon ball z and Tariko. just started like it's out so i need to go see it but like yo did y'all did y'all catch this y'all know this was happening did y'all even know this existed nope i did not i had no, I, I, looked at, I looked at the, the notes and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I saw it and I was like, I was like, wait, no way. Is this real? Right. And I was like, oh, this is hard. And then I was like, wait, who's this third guy? And I was like, that was a little disappointed. But I was like, I don't even know who this guy is, but whatever, I guess. Uh, I'm here for the other two. <laughs> two out of three ain't bad, man. Two out of three ain't bad. But nah, nah. All the Tariko stands are going to come out and the, the will works so like, yo, who the fuck are you talking to, bro? Better put some the same guys playing Halo. That's crazy. <laughs> All, seven. Halo All seven. All seven. That's crazy. That's crazy. But now let us let us know. Let us know, people out there listening. Like, what you what you think of the episode? If you saw it, you know what I'm saying. And uh, we need. I I would love more crossovers like this in anime. I would love. I okay. Let me say this. I do not necessarily like filler, but I do like entertaining filler. If that makes sense. Like yeah, no, I actually get perfectly on that one. Filler for the sake of filler, I do not like. I get it. You need yeah. to take a break. You need to do that. But if you're gonna take a break to filler and hold some hold some stuff up and not going to complete pause, try and make that filler as engaging as possible. Like if you can get some things together and make a crossover episode, you know what I'm saying? Like a little one off little arc, like five episodes or something like that, and then just take a break. This would be the coolest thing for anime. I feel like there's nods and referential respect in a lot of different areas for anime to other anime, but just full on crossovers. We don't see like, you know, you, you see like Gintama and stuff. They'll have the references all the time. You know, they'll have little things here and there and like shows by the same writer or Jason's the same writer, like you Haga show and Hunter X Hunter. Uh, but I would love more crossovers. And if I'm, if I'm just stupid and I just don't know of any crossovers outside of this one, somebody please let me know. But I think this is something that we should definitely see more often, especially, you know, when it comes to like, you know, fill, filler things. 
Yeah, and no, I I think it it should be a, a thing that's more like widely done. But uh-huh. I will live without it. You know, it's it's not. Yeah, it's not upsetting me. Yeah, it's, it's not, not necessary, but it's like it's definitely something it's like, I would stop and really watch. Nice when it is when it does happen. Yeah, it's really nice. One hundred percent. That would definitely be something I would stop and watch. I would gladly take filler if it was like, yo, it didn't have to be every single time, but like, oh, you get a nice little crossover thing. You end up in this little portal. You end up, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's freaking it's freaking Naruto and one and, and uh, Luffy just eating some food on a boat for five episodes, just punching people in the face. That seems like a good time to me. Like, I would be fine with that. Like that that would that would be pretty dope. So I hope that's something that that you know anime industry employs a lot more. Mm-mm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Moving on here. We got a new take from Seth Rogen on the Turtles in a Half Shell, as they seem to be in a teen earlier look with the brand new trailer for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. They got a younger Splinter, star studded cast. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I believe it was a black rock steady. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what's called Splinter got an afro and a mustache. Uh, April <laughs> O'Neil's a beautiful black woman. What? Come on. What, what are we thinking about this, guys? Splinter looked Puerto Rican. That's crazy. Like, I, I, <laughs> I like I he looks like one of my uncles. Like I just see like the stash in the front. Like like I, I felt at home. Um, I think it'll be cool. I'm watching it. I'm I'm watching it. I'm watching it. Yeah, it look, it look cool. I, one thing. Did you guys know about any like, controversy like around him and films like making films? I I saw people like unhappy that he was behind the Seth Rogen. Like, yeah. I, I don't know why they would be. I don't know. I don't know. I guess. I guess his sense of humor, but like at the same time, like I think that that's just a preference thing. Like, uh, okay, yeah, I, I, I wanted to know if like there was actually something like known that he'd done that was wrong, or if people just didn't like him for being him. Yeah, I feel like people just I, the the closest thing I could I I'm googling right now, like literally just like the interview that movie he did with James Franco. That was like the last thing I've seen. I'm that's that's literally it. Mm. That's literally all I'm seeing right now. Yeah, no, that, that I saw that and I was like, "Yo, this looks sick, bro." I, I was yeah. like, they're starting, they're starting them so young as well, so it's like we're definitely gonna get more if it does well. Oh yeah, no, one hundred percent. That's gonna be a great fit. And the only controversy around this movie that I was seeing was people were like, "Oh, Teens Mutant Ninja Turtles went woke. They made April O'Neil black. They made this one person black." Hey, but shut uh, your uh, stupid uh, ass up. <laughs> Hold this ooze on your head top, you bum. Black being woke is such a crazy statement. Bro, like it's works. the crazy yeah. word flip I've ever seen. It, it's, the, it's the craziest term flip I've ever seen, bro. I'm tired of all these woke things. You, you, like, just say you hate I, black I, people. Just say you hate black people, bro. Just, just call a spade a spade. Say it with your chest, man. Saying it's woke is just like, okay. <laughs> like every every two years, people find a new term to say what black people are. Or, or, or have a new label for black people. You know what I'm saying? They had, ur- you can go down a list of urban, woke, all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, just just call a spade a spade and go back in your little hole troll. Like, please. You know, yeah. yeah. Get up out of here. But anyways, back to the movie. Um, I ain't gonna lie. Seth Rogen has not missed, for one, because he's had his hands on Invincible. He's had his hands on The Boys. He's had his hands on some really good stuff as of late from a oh, production what? standpoint. Both of those? Yo. Yes. He had, yeah, he had a hand in producing that. I'm, I'm, he was in there. He was in The Boys. I haven't seen all of it, so. Yeah. At some point, at some point he ends up in there, some random cameo or something like that. But, like, he has his hands on that. He produces the show. He, he's a, I think he's a producer on, on the show. And then the Invincible he is as well. Uh he has his hands on a lot of stuff, bro. Like he is, he's doing some good work. And might I add about this movie? I think they said it on Twitter as well, but just taking the, the, that little, like it's not cell shaded, but just like that style of like a, uh, into the spider verse, the spider verse format, how Puss in Boots kind of took a little stab into it. You know, and now this, this movie is, I like it. I like it a lot. I love I love this style of art. I don't know what to call it exactly. Is it just Spider Verse style? I don't know, but it's fantastic. Keep it up. Put it in more movies. I want it. I want it. Mm-hmm. It's so good. It's so good. I can I can literally watch it in and in, in any different variety of formats for the end of time. I love it. Solid, solid. Um. I had this on the notes, but I have not seen the episode yet because I've clearly, <laughs> I've clearly failed. 
But uh, without spoiling it, if y'all seen the Attack on Titan episode, uh, y'all, y'all can y'all can y'all can get into it. Honestly, uh, I actually haven't. Yes, yes, we can skip <laughs> over this one. Yes, tune in next week, and we'll have some t- some comments on Attack on Titan. <laughs> hey, he. Hey, what I say on Twitter? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Whatever you thought, whatever conversation you guys had, Sailor Moon clears. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying mm-hmm. on the topic, man. Baby, we gonna hold it. All right, let's get into our two main stories for the week here. First and foremost, we got a ton of new information on Final Fantasy 16 in a brand new drop across several media outlets with some early demos, previews, and you know gameplay snippets of the like. Uh, got some information as well, including uh, the main story length being about 35 hours, semi-open world, 11 plus hours of cutscenes. We got a companion uh, called Torgal, who is a pupper, and yes, you can pet that dog. Uh, a PC version that will be intended to release at some point, but not in six months, most likely probably a year after. Uh, active time lore system, which allows you to pause the game at any point to get specific lore points on things or people mentioned at times in the story. New gameplay of icon fights, Clive gameplay, action sequences, and more. New game plus mode, ad launch, and much more. So thoughts on this game? It it looks really good. Like I like I like what I'm hearing. A lot of people are afraid of like 12 hours of cutscenes. I love cutscenes. I'm a big Metal Gear fan. Like those games have like hours of cutscenes by themselves so like when i get like long cutscenes like i'm cool with playing a mission or two putting the controller down watching a cool episode real quick you know what i'm saying like a nice little 30 minute yes, whatever <laughs> but that's basically what they are like, a lot of these games be having these long 30 minute episodes but like i'm cool with it because i'm like smacked i'm like oh let me get the chips out you know what i'm saying no qtes though you throw a qte in a 30 minute like cutscene i'm fighting everybody at the studio like we don't need that's that's come on bro i already put the controller down so but, lame I love active active time lore as long as it's done in the right way. Like, it better not be like, you could pause the game and we're going to play an audio clip. Like, nah, just put the audio clip on my little podcast while I'm running around the world. Like, I don't need I don't need all that. But if it's like, yo, we put in cutscenes in the game to give you lore, bro, that would be nuts. Um, I Honestly, I'm talking about this game and it honestly just sounds like I want to watch a movie. That's really what it kind of sounds like. But I'm a big fan of everything that I've, I've seen so far. Bro, I'm just... I need this game, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I need this game. It looks so good. It looks really, really good. Set pieces, combat, all that stuff, top to bottom. It, it's looking like they actually might come out swinging, like, really, 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 really hard. Uh, again, Final Fantasy XV wasn't the most, uh, you know, uh, Im- impactful thing at first. It got better with the complete edition and stuff and some bug bug patches over the first year. But... I like the Switch. People were very much complaining about this being more action-y rather than turn-based and stuff and didn't really have the turn-based stuff in it. I do not mind this at all. People seem to forget that Final Fantasy is a series that really switches things up almost every iteration. Everything is something new. Everything is something different. Everything is something that's an adjustment. So this is not outside of you know final fantasy's wheelhouse or square enix's wheelhouse when it comes to developing these games so i i i struggle to find the difficulty in understanding why they would go more actiony with this route why they wanted to commit themselves to that i mean just given the nature of how they are like bro these guys know what they're doing and they know they're gonna switch it up almost every time out with these so I wouldn't I, I'm not I'm not complaining too much about, you know, people having uh what's it called? Uh gripes about you know having not having the uh, turn based system or turn based combat. Do what you guys gotta do. Go play another Final Fantasy if that's if that's gonna be your thing, bro. Like it, it'll come back eventually, but for this one, let's let's settle in. But the influences have been clearly stated. They said, you know, they 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 saw God of War, they saw, you know, saying games like that from a a pure gameplay standpoint. They wanted to really lock in on just the actiony, over the top, really hard hitting, and also really you know combo mix mix up type of game. It looks so 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 active. I ain't gonna lie. Like I thought it was gonna be a little bit more floaty. I I, I you know what I'm saying that it didn't it, it didn't look as heavy uh, on first impression. But looking at it now with this gameplay snippets, bro, it looks so. It looks like I got punch behind. I got weight behind the stuff I'm doing. I got real weight behind what I'm doing. I feel like I got a real big arsenal 
of what I can tap into. I feel like there's a skill gap with this. Like somebody like soon like soon a legend can go into this game and make a whole combination comp throughout a couple different things and make something happen. I, I feel like there's a lot more again a lot more skill and a lot more uh rewarding gameplay involved in this rather than just you know a couple spam attacks and all that stuff i feel like the substance is backed up as much as the flash is in this game uh to speak candidly on the you know just some of the i guess story of it in general how you know it's inspired by some of the game of thrones and inspired by you know some of those medieval shows and whatnot just to kind of have that backing i'm cool with that i'm cool with that and i'm cool with them having a more serious tone on it as well they had a little like side piece as well the she uh um i, I forget who it was I, yeah, I think it was yoshida yoshida was like hey listen this is going to be a very dark story this shit is going to be real we cannot have people going fishing and stuff like that and like having like little like you know pickleball matches or blitzball whatever they called it this is going to be some serious shit because it's at war i like that that that's kind of related to everything in the story it, it's going to be a little bit more contained you don't have to have the mini games it's cool but I just I just like that everything is going to weave in from the world. They're just being more intentional with what they put into it. And I think that's going to make for a more rewarding experience overall. So that's dope. Uh, Active Time lore looks really, really, you know, cool because I'm a sucker for lore. I'm a sucker for story. So the more you can throw that in there, I'm cool with. Dog, the icon fights. The icon fights look ridiculous. Son, I listen, I grew up on Power Rangers. I grew up on all that <laughs> stuff. I I wanted to smack the shit out of monsters in a Megazord. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that I can do that in sort of active time in some way, shape, or form looks fantastic, feels fantastic, is fantastic. They said they got influences from, uh, what, Ultraman, Neon Genesis Evangelion. That's honestly really cool just to think about. But to see an execution, it looks re- insane. Insane, bro. Set pieces, action sequences, the gameplay smoothness, the the cuts between a cutscene to gameplay, uh, really, really, really encouraging signs, bro. I am, I'm, I'm very, very much looking forward to this game, honestly. And then for those people who are tapped into that video game draft stuff, this could be something that some of y'all missed. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. This could be something that some of y'all missed if you don't pick it up. So, I, I, I am very, very actively just g- give me this game again. I, I am going to slander slightly for black folks. But I will be playing this game. It just looks good. Yeah, no, I either, bro. Mm-mm, man. I I need it. I need it. I need it. Need it. Need it. Need it. Need it. Need it. Yeah. And, uh, I can't wait to see. Um, but, I can't wait to see it in person. Like I. That's the thing is with like Final Fantasy games though is that, like I was a huge big fan of fifteen. Like I really was excited for fifteen. It looked insane to me. But then I got it and I was severely disappointed. So I hope that this isn't that Um, because I think that they they, I think they still got it. I think that this is the one to bring Final Fantasy back into the forefront and back into that gaming conversation. But it's one of those things where like I've seen them fail. I've seen Square Enix fail. I've actually seen them fail more times recently than I've seen them succeed. You know, like I've seen big fan of of Kingdom Hearts play three kind of underwhelmed. That was a big flagship title. Final Fantasy 15 big flagship titles but then you see them soar with final fantasy 7 mm. uh remake and that and you're sitting there like wow so these they still yeah. got it but we just need to make sure that they didn't that 7 wasn't a fluke because it's final fantasy 7 if they like finally realize hey it's time to to tighten up because we need to tighten up mm-hmm. yeah and they can do it. They can take time. Like, look how they look how they worked on Final Fantasy fourteen. Now, I'm not saying it's the same thing in terms of execution because it's two completely different games. But just how they're taking care of IPs in the modern era, they can do it. It's just a sense of do they care enough and how much, how much effort and focus can they put into it? Because when they're spread too thin, things do not look good. When they have a consolidated and united front, things are a lot better. Look at how fractured Kingdom Hearts 3's development was. First Square Enix, how I got handed off to you know one team, then the Osaka team. It was on Luminous Engine, then it was on the Unreal Engine. Things got you know topsy turvy. Same thing happened with Final Fantasy 15. If they're operating under the same level of stability, I feel like Final Fantasy 16 will be the biggest benefactor of that, and it'll have a really solid release. So, and and then, and the fact that they're dropping gameplay this early with the game dropping in June, I feel like that's a really confident sign. I feel like now the now again they said it they're just in polishing mode so they're just putting the last little touches on everything make sure it's good i think they're confident and i have reason to be too so i'm with it 
All right. All right. Moving on to the last story here on the show. Uh, Valorant. The CSGO Fireball Simulator, a.k.a. one of the hottest competitive games going today. They dropped a brand new trailer for Premiere Mode. The new team-based competitive mode that is bridging the gap between the game and its competitive esport environment, as it enables you to create a team and take part in weekly matches and skill, uh, yeah, well, yeah, skill, skill matches, whatever you want to call it, to potentially take part in tournaments to prove your status as a top team in your respective skill division. Now, Riot are also eventually introducing the pathway to pro circuits within Challenger Leagues, which will, repre- which will replace qualifier attorneys and directly connect you to Premier to have a, basically a straight pipeline to international leagues and championships if teams have the medal. Now, Premier is coming in beta very soon, uh, which will be actually Act 3, Episode 6 in Valorant, which is a couple of months away. So thoughts on this, because I think this is personally a huge, huge, huge change for just uh, the competitive scene and the competitive structure in general for games. Yeah, this is is, is really really big. Uh, it's just the main thing is just they're making it accessible. It's, yeah. it's never been easier. Well, once it releases, it will never be easier. Like if you like, there's no restrictions to like having to sign up. There's no gatekeeping. There's no like you don't have to be in an early established community. There's no. It's like you load up Valorant and there you go. There is your shot. There is your chance. And it's like you you can do it whenever you want, you know? Yeah. I think that is literally, I don't think it's ever been done before on, on this scale anyway. Um, no. So I'm I'm really, really happy uh, and excited to to see what this brings. I I think it's super interesting because like it's not it's something that's not really Exactly what you said, something that's not really done and we haven't ever seen. And it's so cool to think that, like, back in the day when I used to play, like, Overwatch competitively, I actually stopped playing Overwatch competitively because I was on console. Like, I used to get on comp every day, like, grinding, trying to get better. And, like, I remember sitting there and watching Overwatch League and thinking to myself, man, they're all on computer. This is, I'm, like, it wasn't that I was dreaming of becoming a Overwatch League player. But I thought to myself, like, if that's not the end goal, why am I trying this hard? Like, I was giving up way too many hours. And I think it was, it was for the better. Like, I realized, like, I, I got more time back out of my, for my life. Um, but it's just funny to think, like, now you can play Valorant. And, like, let's say you're really good and you're doing things like you're just like, wow, I'm really good. I might actually be able to make it, right? Like, you might actually be able to go from, like, just playing ranked with your boys and then realizing you have this raw talent to being on the main stage and being like, yo, I'm, I'm here. Like, this is like, that's kind of, that's a, that's like every kid's dream. Cause it's like, yeah. And that's literally how it should be. Uh, but there's such a disconnect in, yeah. in these games, like that make it super hard. It's like, if you are in the top 750 players in apex legends, there, there should be, you know, incentive for you to continue to play the game outside of just getting, a special badge every season you know it should it should be a thing there should be a ranked mode and then there should be something like premier that you know is just an entry into what comp will be like i, I feel like more games need to do more to actually support their scenes and it, yeah I, so I, it's mind-boggling to me that there, there isn't anything like this uh you want to know why you really want to know why <laughs> You want to know the reason, right? You Go do? ahead. Because <laughs> uh, esports organizations, especially Western esports organizations, are stupid as shit. Let me clarify. There is an orientation or a belief, a mentality, that content around competition, especially esports competition, is more uh, lucrative in the long run than the actual, you know, thing of thing in and of itself, the system. They think content around it and having the buzz in the short term is more mm. fruitful than actually nourishing the system itself. When you look at when you look at stuff like uh what's it called? Uh how how they did the COD re rebrand and everything, how all these brands like complexity got bought by a team, they had to go relocate to another location, how all these other things, you know, got patterned out and, and optic gaming became optic boston or whatever town that they're settled in yeah. right now like 
how all this thing spread, the reorganization, it's, it, it doesn't feel like there's a connection directly to how COD is. It's disconnected for one. And for two, to speak on the content thing, a lot of these organizations who are competitive by nature and started as competitive groups, they are more keen on signing people who have clout and who have some standing from a social standpoint and will, you know, again, just help things move numbers rather than actually push competition rather than actually bring up people who are competitive in that space and need to be put on a higher platform to show how skilled they are. They're not bigging up their mm -hmm. stars. They're showing the most relevant thing on esports I've seen probably like in the past couple of months was Scump retiring. Scump's been in the game like 15 years and I barely know any other name besides that. That's yeah, a pro that's, that's a problem. I was like, I was like like they invest so heavily into these players, but it's just like these players are not gonna live forever. Like I I, tweet, I tweeted the other day, I was like, franchising is literally the worst no. thing to ever happen in esports. And I'm not even mad at, I'm not even mad at a certain franchising thing, but it's just like there's no active pipeline to build yeah, more separate. people to franchise. Okay. Top orgs in the world, yeah. Give us your millions and everyone else. <laughs> Lol. F Keep and your, your clips on Twitter. Facts you know? for nothing. <laughs> Like, what it is like it's really, really sad. the game is flipped like i was literally talking about this with, 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 with my boy off, off off podcast we were like bro the way the way competitive scenes die is by straying away from what made them in the first place i mean that's how most things are but especially with the, a, a competitive scene you need to focus on the game the experience the actual competitive structure of what you're doing what Valorant's doing is one of the most important things for esports, I think, has potentially ever been done. Keeping purity on the sport, longevity in the sport. If you can create a consistent pipeline of stars, teams, moments, and all that stuff from within your system, you don't have to yeah. have some false, you know, uh, you don't have to have some external league. You don't have to have billionaires or content creators or streamers come in to boost up your organization and buy stocks and buy shares in your stuff. If you can naturally bring some, like some, some organic interest from within your system, you create a pipeline and a pathway that will consistently generate new teams, new stars, new people to root for, new tactics, new moments, new everything on, on every level of your competitive circuit, your competitive system, every single level. You'll create interest from everywhere. And consolidating that is such a big key to why Valorant will last much much longer than a lot of other esports and get not even not even last longer but have much more consistent buzz it's and vehement value. support like is value invested in it because you like you could literally see some of your guys that you went to school with on the big stage like it's it's, it's that simple now it, it's it's and it's that it's the accessibility it's the consolidation yeah. it feels simpler it feels holistic the people that were packed out in the stands for a Valorant event the other day, I saw it on Twitter like a couple of days ago. They were packed to the rafters. You know what I'm saying? Clapping the clapping the foam finger or the foam, uh, you know what I'm saying, the foam sticks, you know what I'm saying, in, in the in the Valorant thing. If those people in there, the most vehement supporters, can can have access to that system, that only to me, that only makes your support for that game and, and involvement and engagement in that game only that much higher because think about how many people who are in the stands who didn't have any registration forms or didn't have any signups or didn't have a coach or anything yeah, like that or whatever process to get to the esports process to most uh to most esports uh, so i don't i don't and blame people i will from not facts even the barrier the barrier to entry in the system is too high the, the uh, for a lot of different esports so it's it's like you're it's like you're cutting off it's like you're cutting off your livelihood because at the end of the day, the teams you have currently in rotation, they're only going to get older. You know what I'm saying? And then the pipeline might not be as fast for people to replace players and stuff like that. And at the end of the day, you're stuck with the same teams. You're stuck with the same same names. You know what I mean? Like, there's not really that much variety. You might get a new star or two or whatever. But the system that cannot produce how things are in a lot of different esports. The system can't produce enough longevity and involvement within the game itself within the structure itself to support it 
And I feel like a lot of esports have gone away for or, or they've lost sight of fixing their structure and making their structure as accessible and as fruitful as possible to generate natural interest on the sport and not the content around the sport. You know what I mean? Like, do yeah. what, who was it? Faye Sensei or Faye somebody? I can't remember. He was on a podcast and he was talking about, hey, we signed like L- Lil Yachty to Faze. What 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 is that? How does that help us whatsoever? How does that really help us whatsoever? Yeah, if we get a little buzz, cool. But that that's not really what we're about. Oh uh, yeah, Faze Rain. Yeah, yeah, Fa- yeah, Faze Rain. Thank you, Faze Rain. Thank you, Faze Rain. Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't remember which member, but yeah, he was he was like, yo, what what does this matter? Like that doesn't really help us, bro. It just comes up there and we're just sucking up to him because he's a little yachty. That doesn't really help us at the end of the day. And I'm not saying they're an e. They, they, they do have esports. I can't remember off the top of my head, but stuff like that where it's like. You have owners like a like a you know what I'm saying like a like a what a, what a, like a Tim the Tatman or something like that like where maybe the 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 ownership and the the viewership actually the viewership is predicated on his presence and not the sport itself and not the team itself that only detracts from what you're trying to do in the system you know what I mean like I say all that to say this esports has a lot of work to do if they want to last and they want to keep growing because you see with all these layoffs you see with all these different organizational changes and whatnot and just scaling back of teams and all this other stuff that it's hitting a wall it's hitting a wall and they need to focus on the sport structure of it valorant is doing an act valorant is doing something that's very very big this this should this should and probably will be a commonality with a lot of different esports in years to come if it's not already present somewhere else, which I highly doubt, this will become a common occurrence in in you know in years to come. You gotta you gotta create that bridge. You gotta create that bridge and create that system that at least shows you, hey, there's a pathway from this game. If you really want to get involved with this game, yeah, everybody think, everybody can see it plain as day. Mean, the visibility. Thing it's like there is a chance. There's there's so much like inspiration that can be built up inside of someone once they figure out once they find out that they have a chance mm-hmm. and it's and it's not and it's not even not even the fact that people and, and it's not just the people that build the inspiration to play it's the people that play casually but they see people at the top level and they enjoy it as a pastime yeah, it's, 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 if you like boot up your game and see oh premiere right, modes oh, right there all right cool look here are some matches that you can play with people in your skill rank and it will give you that same feeling mm-hmm. like there's people are asking for Facts. from from things like apex ranked it's like there there should be a mode that allows people to participate in the same game styles that they watch professionals play at. like it's she it makes so much sense that there's no other way i can explain it it's like if you watch something and you enjoy it you should be able to play in a similar style mm-hmm. like, i hear come it. on people it's yeah not rocket science. Fact. And, and and again this i i really do think it goes beyond just the just the playing it you got to create the ecosystem, man. It's creating the ecosystem. That's what creates longevity. That's what creates success. That's what creates a, a FOMO feeling. There has to be some type of system there that people want to get into, that you see evidence of, oh, that person started there, and they ended up on, on nationals, or they ended up on internationals. They ended up at championships or whatever. You, you, oh, I muted myself for a second. Uh, uh, let's go. <laughs> they needed that clear pathway of... I've seen it done. Every time I boot up Valorant, I see Premier Mode, and I see oh, yeah. from the from you know those Premier Mode matches, the season ended. But those people that came from Premier Mode, they're going to championships. And when I when I'm done playing the Valorant game, you know, what I'm saying when I'm done playing the game, I'm gonna turn it off and go watch somebody who came from Premier Mode actually compete. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's just making, it's, it's like now, like when they scale it and they figure out what they're doing, they can do localized tournaments. They can get people out of their mm-hmm. houses. They can get people socializing mm-hmm. and meeting people. Like, like you said, it's building an ecosystem, and it's not hard to do. Especially, yeah. well, like all right, fair enough. This is right. We're talking about they have more than enough resources to do it, but from a lot of like game devs and studios that are doing this shit, like it's it's who've not, had tenure, yeah, who've had they, who've had years. To really be on, to to really just be here and figure out what's going on, they, from my outsider's perspective, if I can't see 
what's going on from some if I can't name you, you know what I'm saying, a couple different stars off of a team. And again, I'm not saying I don't pay the most attention to it now, but if I'm a casual, if I'm a casual gamer in that lane, like I can tell you, I can name off like right now, uh, you know, an Imperial Howl, a sweet, an NRG or whatever from from the Apex side of things. If I don't have that visibility to people's stars, the ecosystem, how the 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 game's competitive scene works generally. I feel like I'm not as connected to it. It's, there's a disconnect between how the structure is and what people can enjoy for a lot of different esports. And I feel like Valorant is shaping up to make the best jump to have the best esports community and structure that we've seen in gaming history. And this is something that people should probably follow suit in in the near future, like as soon as possible. This this is something that will take Valorant. It will extend Valorant shelf life by a long 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 time and you'll see you'll see it might overtake a lot of different esports it it, 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 it already has but it's, it, with this mode and how it's going to be set up in the ecosystem it's going to be poised to take over a lot of different esports across the world and a lot of different markets with how they're setting up now yeah man, I, i'm really excited to see how it works and the opportunities that it brings for people that's mm-hmm. really really great move from right yeah yeah I can't wait to see. I would love to see them implement something like this. I, I don't know if League already has something like this. I know they have something called Clash, but I don't really know what that is at all. Um, mm-hmm. But like, even just like seeing this from like, if you're playing Apex, like I, just seeing, the thing is like moves like this are kind of like Apex getting a ping system. It's something that is so like fundamental mm-hmm. um, yeah. that people realize was missing that it might just become like a snowball effect and we will see this happening more and more. Yep. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. It's... For games that are free to play and and things like that now, the community is key. You can't just get on, play a game, get off, and expect people to you know stay engaged all the way through. Now you need you need everything on deck. You need as much cohesive cohesive elements in an experience as possible to keep people engaged and keep growing. That's why a lot of that's why a lot of a lot of free to play things are under scrutiny now. It's like, yo, what's what do I what incentive do I have to keep going here? That's why things like you know the skill gap, the all that stuff. But when you have all those intangibles and have those boxes checked, beyond that, it's what can you do to bring the community together even more. That's what yeah. that's what that next step is, especially for free to play multiplayer games. What's that next step to keep the community on their toes and together and meshing esports is is a really big is a is a really big positive for that for that box to be ticked so yeah that's solid and i must i must end this note off with i don't play valorant for a single day in my fucking life <laughs> I, I i play i play valorant like four times i'm ass bro i don't play valorant but <laughs> they're doing good stuff here like scaling it like mm-hmm. valorant is definitely much easier to create a system like this than league of legends mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When they finally do release, uh, was it Project L? Yeah. When they do release Project L, I think that would be a perfect. Like, I think it yeah. suits that get that oh, style of game if they, more than Valorant. If so they, to say. yeah, if they, if they, if they, if they get that system, if they test it in Valorant and put it into Project L, and it booms in Project L, they're changing I everything there's esports. No, there's no money in the FGC competitive, anyways. If mm-hmm. I'm correct. Mm, I might be changing as well, though. Yeah, Cap- that, Cap- 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 Capcom, Capcom did put a million on the Capcom Cup, but generally, it, yeah. across all esports, across all FGC it, it stuff, go from, it's like, not, how many it's major not. FGC tournaments is there in the year? Uh, it depends on the game. Yeah, it uh, might depend okay, on the game. Outside of, yeah, yeah. there's a, there's a few like, different ones. Just going from what they've done with like League and Valorant, there would be like four minimum a year you know it would, mm-hmm. it would change yeah like that. but the the issue with it is i don't think that it's not it's not that i don't think it's plausible um it really the, the fgc is weird like it's so old school and a lot of it's like mentalities and like it's just it this this is a, a whole topic for another day yeah. uh kind of a kind of a conversation but like the things that work for esports when it comes to shooters doesn't necessarily translate too well when it comes to fighters. And I yeah, think that's, that's just fair. because of that's like fair. the ecosystem in and of itself. Like, I don't think it's, it's as big as a shooter ecosystem. Cause mm. like, think of all the friends that, you know, play uh, apex legends. Now think of all the friends that, you know, play fighters. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. A lot more. It's a very, very, very fair point. 
Yeah. So like, I think that I think like don't don't get me wrong. I think what you have what you what you're saying has validity, but like, I don't know if like Project L will take over the fighting game market because it's mm. it's such a weird market in and of itself. Because like some people who like those two like the assist fighter that Project L is gonna be, some people are never touching that. Because they're like, yeah. I'm a Tekken player. I only want to play these kind of games. It's such, it's such a weird thing, but it is a great conversation. Yeah, it is. It is. I'm, I'm yeah. just hope, I can hope that across the board, this just sparks like a, yes. whole, a whole lot more of like accessibility to an yeah. like, easier path to pro. I think that, and I think that it will in Project L. I think that it, Project L for sure will have that in there. And I think it is an amazing, like I completely agree with that. I think it is an amazing feature to have in that game. Now, will Tekken and Street Fighter pick it up? That is something completely different. That's a leg- that's a legacy. That's a legacy yeah. thing. Uh, yeah, that's that's that is a different ball game because those those are already like set in their ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because sometimes like even like games like Street Fighter, Street Fighter Online is not the same as Street Fighter in person just because of the way online yeah. works in and of itself. Like yeah. that, it's it's so it's almost it's that's, it's almost like they're not even on, a, on the same like esports plane. It's like yeah. a weird, it's <laughs> a weird takes, thing. That yeah. takes that takes systemic change for for them yeah. to to like really address having more cons- consolidated systems. But for for yeah, you know, again, for games like shooters, for most shooters and stuff like that, not really that much of a problem. Yeah, I also think like the FGC is just more of like an in person kind of like thing in general. Uh, yeah, like I think. And I don't think it could, it could change. I don't think that that's a, like a bad thing. I really would love for it to change because there's ways you yeah. could do a lot of cool things online, but it's just one of those things where it's yeah. like, the ethos of it has I, always been in person. Yeah. It, it that's, that's kind of like how the community has been. Cause they started off such a wild time ago, but again, different conversation for a different day. Yeah. But yeah, again, just back, just to wrap it up. Yeah. Like it's Valorant really, really could have one of the most game changing systems of the past like what five years honestly like this this could be something that changed the landscape especially in, within esports this this could be that thing that is another like it's another big bang for esports damn damn we yeah that was that was a good one i got i got a little bit raspy right there in the voice damn hold on let me get a sweet <laughs> water but yeah that's that's all we got on the show notes man uh ran through it a lot of different stuff that we had to cover today. Got to get that back to back. Anything that we might have missed from this week? Um, um the oh. only thing is would be the finals, but I'm uh, think I'm just gonna cover that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We didn't get in. That shit is us. Yeah, that shit um, ass. Yeah, L, give, give L us game, a code. L game. <laughs> L game. Give us a code. Oh yeah, there was a trailer for. I think it was another trailer, or maybe it was just another like mention of Rise of the Ronin. Which is uh, again, like, give me anything, anything feudal Japan. I'm a whore. So, what do you want? Just give it to oh, me. Oh, actually, one thing we we uh, we missed is uh, Wulong. Oh, I didn't uh, play it. Yet. I have. I've not. I've not touched it yet. Because I've, yeah, I've, I've been seeing good things. Though. Yeah, people was like, yeah, solid, super solid game, which I'm I'm very pleased about. I'm I'm very pleased it got got good scores and solid scores because I have I have I have thoughts and I have very positive uh hopes for uh you know what i'm saying a lot of these games based in like you know chinese folklore and chinese mythos and just coming from the east and stuff like that i got a lot of mm. high hopes so that's good um oh yeah uh, this just came out earlier but um i i believe they just um brought back john bernthal as uh what's it called the punisher in the daredevil born again show i think they casted him again there was a report that came out oh, so the pun yeah. so the punisher may be back in in uh, daredevil oh I'm just saying that, that that is pretty that is pretty sick. I am uh I I I am how you say interested, intrigued. Very 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 very. Well, yeah, the only other thing is like um I think a new league character got announced, but yeah, motherfuckers don't play league. <laughs> yeah, fuck fuck league. And fuck. I don't even play league like that to be, to even really want to talk about it either. Yeah. Uh, exactly. But that's the only that's the only that's the only news cuz I was like all oh, this is hype but then I'm also like damn I got to play league to play him though. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I know we'll cover it we'll probably cover it on something separate but all I got to say is Budokai Tenkaichi 4. Yeah. Oh, we'll cover that another time. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, okay. All right, cool. I got that out. Thank goodness. All right. Whew. But yeah, that's all the stories we got for this week. Uh any closing notes? We'll start with when, bro. Uh take us home, bro. Uh, drink your water, um, update your drivers, and Oof. avoid League of Legends. <laughs> fair, fair. Very sound Honestly. advice. 
I'm going to follow up with that and say definitely drink your water and just avoid anything that's going to stress you out. I, I hear that, bro. I hear that, man. Uh, I'm going to have to triple this motion and say do things you love. Do do things that make you happy, <laughs> man. And and speaking of making people happy, you could definitely make me and the, and the No Cool Down crew happy by rating this five stars, man. Go on all your audio platforms, Spotify and Apple Podcasts, namely, and rate us five stars there. Just type in No Cool Down. We will be right there. Just uh, hit that five stars for us. We're also available on Google Podcasts, uh, Stitcher Radio. We're also available on, of course, Anchor, uh, YouTube, youtube.com slash at No Cool Down, Twitter, No Cool Down Pod, uh, Instagram, and TikTok at No Cool Down Podcast. Make sure you catch us there. A lot of new content coming on the way. You guys do not want to miss it. Uh, make sure you follow uh, our my podcast, Partners in Crime, as always, at King V-I-I-I. You know what I'm saying? Don't miss don't miss no tweets from him because he's going to be saying uh, some some random but crypt, cryptic but very inspirational things at, at random <laughs> times in, in the week. So you do not want to miss those tweets, man. Please. <laughs> and, and, of course, you don't want to miss one easy getting the shit scared out of him in Dead Space or anything like that. So make sure you check out at Wotaku Channel. That's W-O-T-A-K-U Channel. And when easy on his Twitter uh, to check out anything uh, on that side. Uh, all my stuff at that man trip. Um, oh yeah, almost lost my mind because my favorite sports team in the absolute world just put me on a YouTube video. So I, I'm, I'm I, I retire. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm. This is my last episode, guys. <laughs> my life's complete. <laughs> I'll, I'll see y'all later. You know, say it's, it's been, it's been real. The price of the script went up. <laughs> yeah. the price yesterday's price is not today's price. That's my message, bro. That is my message, bro. Yesterday's price is not today's price. That has been <laughs> episode 58 of No Cool Down, and we are out of there.